let's talk about Cyberpunk 2077. So at 1080p, as you can see here, uh, Windows 11 LTSC did by far the worst. It's It wasn't even close. We're talking about uh, roughly a 25% hit here. So yeah, it was kind of interesting to see that. And uh, you'll find it more and more interesting in context of the rest of the results that we'll see. Uh, also, it did the worst at 1440p, but not by a whole lot when compared to Windows 10. Uh, it did do about anywhere from obviously seven and a half to eight and a half percent worse than Windows 11 Pro and Windows 11 Home. And right here, uh, Windows 11 Home at 4K did the best, not in just uh, average results for FPS, but at uh, 1% lows by a decent clip. Uh, and just as a indicator of interest, as well, it did pretty decent on the 1% lows, the the best 1% lows at 1440p. Uh, whereas Windows 10 Home, interestingly enough, was the strongest performer at 1080p, uh, which makes me think that maybe Windows 10 is more apt to be optimized on certain games when it comes to 1080p, but not so much at 1440p and 4K. But let's take a look at the rest of the charts. For Black Myth Wukong, we have a similar result at 1080p, except for Windows 10 Home didn't do as well. It didn't lead the pack at 1080p. Uh, the two first places, uh, pretty much a tie on the average FPS was Windows 11 Pro and Windows 11 Home, uh, whereas the best 1% lows came from Windows 10. At 1440p, our best performer was Windows 11 Pro, and then we've got a little bit behind on average FPS was Windows 10, but not by a whole lot. Uh, really, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference in performance there. And Windows 11 Home uh, did pretty similar to Windows 10 on average FPS. And technically, you can make a case for having a three-way tie on the 1% lows between Windows 11 Pro, Home, and Windows 10. Then we got pretty much a three-way tie at 4K between Windows 11 Pro, Windows 11 Home, and Windows 10 Home on average FPS. And you could kind of say the same thing between Windows 11 Pro and Windows 11 Home on the 1% lows. And Windows 10 Home isn't very far behind, nor is uh, Windows 11 LTSC when it comes to the 1% lows. But we do take a decent hit across the board on performance with Windows 11 LTSC, which I found kind of surprising uh, how Windows 11 LTSC performed. I'm not sure what causes that. I mean, considering that that's probably the most de-bloated version of Windows that you can actually get. So yeah, uh, interesting data. And then Red Dead Redemption 2, we have almost a three-way tie at 1080p on average FPS on all the three different versions of Windows 11. Same thing with the 1% lows. Interestingly, although Windows 10 didn't do so hot on 1080p compared to the other three, it's not very far behind. And it did a monster job on the 1% lows. And we got 1440p where uh, similarly, we've got the pretty much a tight for the three different versions of Windows 11 and a little bit behind on Windows 10, but not by a whole lot. And then we pretty much have a three-way tie between Windows 11 Pro Home and Windows 10 Home on the 1% lows with uh, Windows 11 LTSC falling a little bit behind. Kind of a similar pattern at the 1080p on 4K with the uh, average FPS but a little bit different on the 1% lows where we got uh, Windows 11 Pro and Windows 11 Home outscoring the other two windows. Not by a huge amount, but enough to talk about. An interesting thing happened on the Windows 10 Home benchmarking for Red Dead 2. Well, I found it interesting. You tell me if it's not interesting or not. Usually you get the classic Arthur in the last scene for the robbery, but in Windows 10, I got Arthur in a hood with a nice red vest. I don't remember running into this before 
let me know in the comments if you all get this sometimes on Windows 10 or Windows 11 or if it's maybe just a Windows 10 thing. And here's here's the Firmark charts. And remember, during the Firmark run on Windows 10, we were hitting 630 watts. But interestingly enough, we didn't get more performance out of Windows 10, right? Pretty much a four-way tie on average FPS and almost a four-way tie on the 1% lows where Windows 11 Home is actually uh, outscoring enough to talk about by about 5% of difference between that and the lowest score. And then we got at 1440p pretty much a similar story except for where Windows 11 Home outperformed the other three slightly at 1080p it underperformed versus the other three at 1440p uh, but practically a tie right here and practically a tie at the one percent lows and similarly at 4k we've got pretty much a four-way tie here on the average fps and kind of a four-way tie more like a three-way tie on the one percent lows with windows 10 lagging enough to point out by about probably six and a half percent or so of difference there then we got 3d mark steel nomad and the results were interesting again in that Windows 11 Home did the worst. Uh, I'm wondering if something was going on in the background at 1080p for this particular result because it, we're talking about a uh, really a 10% hit right here. And so uh, I, I ran it a couple of times and confirmed we averaged out around 314.2. So uh, really interesting there. Uh, Maybe there was some kind of download going on in the background during the whole time. I'm not sure. But on the 1% lows, uh, pretty close together of a grouping, but Windows 10 takes the cake on 1% lows by a decent enough chunk. And we got 1440p where Windows 11 Home uh, outscores the other three, but not by a huge amount. And on the 1% lows, kind of a similar story there. Then at 4K, a similar result in that Windows 11 Home outperforms slightly the other three on both the average FPS and the 1% lows, which makes me ask myself what was going on here at 1080p. Kind of supports my theory that maybe something was going on in the background the entire time I uh, tested for Windows 11 during Steel Nomad. Then we used uh, the Blender benchmark, uh, the 4.5.0 benchmark. And as you can see here on the CPU test, we're pretty much tied all across the board, except for maybe a slight outlier right there with Windows 10 on Junk Shop, but not enough for it to not be considered run variants. But overall, we've got a pretty much a four-way tie on Blender on the CPU test. Pretty much the same story on the GPU test for Blender. Although it looks like there's a decent clip, uh, more than 300 point difference between Windows 11 Home and Windows 10. In relation to that number, we're talking about a less than 5% difference, enough to talk about, but not a huge difference there. And then in Junk Shop, a little more than 5% difference between Windows 11 Home and Windows 10 Home. And as you can see, Windows 11 Home seems to be outperforming all the other OSs throughout, which is kind of interesting because we pretty much had a four-way tie on the CPU side of things. But on the GPU side of things, uh, Windows 11 Home seems to pull ahead by enough for it to be talked about. Uh, and then we've got the Passmark uh, performance tests benchmark the version 11.1 and so this tests the cpu the 2d rendering 3d rendering memory usage and disk usage it'll give you individual scores with this stuff and then it'll give you an overall scoring and so as you can see here they're all pretty tightly grouped together as far as overall scores they all ended up in the 99th uh, percentile mostly because you know all the hardware is the same across the board, the only difference is the operating system. But it, I, I did find it interesting that there were differences, a decent enough 
to talk about, especially between Windows 11 Pro, which ended up at the top, and Windows 10 Home, which ended up at the bottom. We got a 400 point, more than 400 point difference here, which is a little over two and a half percent of difference between Windows 11 Pro and Windows 10. Not a huge amount of difference, but I do find it interesting that the overall system performance, the best score is Windows 11 Pro, whereas on all our all of our other previous benchmarks, Windows 11 Pro doesn't necessarily come out on top across the board. Then we got the Cinebench R23 CPU benchmark uh, for single core and multi-core scores. And as you can see here, all these scores are pretty close together on both the single core and multi-core. And Windows 10 Home does take the crown on single core and Windows 11 LTSC takes a crown on multi-core, but not by a whole lot versus Windows 10. But all of the scores are pretty close together from each other. And so honestly, you, you're probably not gonna see the difference without doing this particular test, right? When it comes to everyday performance. And so we're pretty much at a four-way tie on both single core and multi-core essentially. And similarly, on Crystal Dismark version 9.0.1, we're pretty pretty close together on both the read and write speeds, enough for us to call this a tie on both sides. So no real difference there. I mean, there is a difference, but but not enough that any normal user is going to notice without actually running this. And then we've got the shortcut video editor doing a long form video and a short form video, uh, what the export times are like using the AV1 and BENC codec and three filters, same exact three filters on each export on the same exact video each time. So we did the 20 minute long video export and a five minute long video export. And as you can see, on the 20 minute long, Windows 11 LTSC by far took the longest to export. And that makes me wonder if Shotcut isn't optimized for LTSC, but it is the same build as Windows 11 Pro. They're both 24H2 builds. So you would think that the debloated operating system wouldn't take nearly as long as the other three, but it took the longest. Windows 11 Home took the second longest, and then we're a little bit closer together on Windows 11 Pro and Windows 10 Home. Then we got a slightly different story on the five minute short video where we're pretty much tied between LTSC and Pro. Windows 11 Home took the longest this time, and then the shortest amount of time was by Windows 10 Home, which by the way, on the 20 minute video, Windows 10 Home won as well, so yeah. It looks like Windows 10 Home is might be the better operating system than the other three when it comes to exporting videos. All right, that's it. That's Those are my findings. Like I said, it was going to take me a while, so it took a couple of days. Uh, so what does all this data tell us? Well, uh, you might have noticed that I said often during the charts that you probably wouldn't notice any difference in performance between all four OS's without running the actual tests and tracking the numbers. Surprisingly, what I found was that even with some differences between the OS's where sometimes one OS was slightly better than the other in a given test, meaning bloat, no bloat, some bloat, Windows 10, Windows 11, it doesn't seem to make a major overall impact. At least not that you would notice without running tests like this and looking closely at the numbers. So my conclusion is after running 96 different data points at an average of three times a piece is it doesn't much matter which OS you have other than your preferences and what you want on your OS. So my advice is to get the OS that will make you happiest, I guess. Certainly you should be removing the things you don't want or use to minimize background stuff to get it as efficient as you'd like. But for the most part, however you choose to do that, um, whatever you choose for the OS, it'll be fine. Now, to be fair, you might experience larger differences than I did more due to your specific combination of PC components and software. So if you have had a different experience than I did, then 
please let me know in the comments. For me, at the very least, this satisfied my curiosity on the overall thought process of what OS actually affects things. I was hoping for major differences here, but unfortunately I didn't find those. So I'll end up sticking to a regular Windows 11 home for most things, except without a lot of the extra crap and bloat it comes with, because why have that stuff if you don't need or want it, right? Anyways, uh, hope you found this information interesting. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like and subscribe. It does help out the channel a ton. And in the meantime, thanks for joining me. And I hope to see you in the next one.